Hey, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you and see your screen. Okay. Um, hello, uh, my name is Miguel. I am PhD. I am postdoc in uh, KTH. Um, I will. I have the pleasure to start as an introduction to in situ visualization and in situ analysis. And let me start uh, broadly speaking about where we are, the simulation workflow. And here, given a physical model, uh, new knowledge could be achieved to three main, three main stage. In the first stage, uh, given a domain or boundary conditions, usually we start uh, preparing uh, mesh or preparing the partitions uh, that we need uh, for the numerical simulation. And uh, after, after that, um, partial differential equations uh, are discretized, and then the resultant systems are, are, the resultant equation systems are solved, and the generated data is stored. And after that, uh, such data could be analyzed and visualized. Uh, this approach, uh, this approach could be called the, the post hoc processing, and it has the it has three main parts as I have uh, mentioned. First, uh, raw data is is produced. After that, uh, the storage and data analysis and data uh, and scientific visualization is performed at the end. It is worth noting that uh, analysis and visualizations are different, at least uh, uh, for me. Uh, in data analysis, data is exam examined by means of, for instance, statistics, machine learning, data mining, or something like that. While during visualization, uh, rendering techniques and different uh, uh, computational geometric algorithms are applied. This is a, a, a huge difference between data analysis and data visualization. Now, um, in the case of in situ, in the situ processing, a difference of the of the post hoc uh, processing storage is not important. We are going directly from raw data towards the data analysis of the scientific visualization. This is the main difference uh, between in situ and no in situ analysis. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, uh, here I uh, have a first uh, example. Here we have, uh, uh, the objective is uh, the computation of uh, burning velocity of a swirling established turbulent premix uh, flame in a combustor chamber. Here uh, we have, we need, uh, the challenge is that we have a high resolution because the uh, high resolution is necessary in order to solve correctly the temporal scales. We have uh, six millions of elements and approximately 2,000 2, time steps using 1,000 1, processors. Here, uh, the idea is to perform a parallel reduction of a surface integral. This surface integral is related to one of the, of the chemical properties, the progress variable. This progress variable uh, shows uh, when or gives us uh, the idea of how the, the fuel is consumed. This is what you can see here in the, in the animation, how, uh, how is the progress variable evolving. So what we are going to do is to, to using, using uh, uh, geometrical uh, algorithms, we reduce we perform the integral over this surface, and at the end, we only get a, a simple number. 
this simple number uh, give uh, give an idea of how, of how the how this uh, chemical property uh, the behavior of this chemical property in the time. Uh, in this in this uh, uh, graph, we can see uh, in the negative the preprocessing preprocess preprocess performed uh, using a post hoc uh, approach a pro uh, procedure proce processing. Here, uh, data is analyzed each one thousand time steps. We can see that uh, uh, on the other hand, and uh, the last 20,000 time steps corresponds to the in situ performed each time step. Here you can, we can see that the resolution uh, used in this case improve a lot the, the, the quality of the data. And you can see you can see a zoom of this data, and and you can uh, you can see also that uh, in this case uh, uh, th a lot of details could be analyzed using the in situ analysis. That again, this in situ is performed each time step, performing the integral over the uh, the progress variable. Um, okay, now which is the cause of, of do something like that? Here we I show a trace and one thousand cores and time time steps, and you can see that uh, one the time step the total time is, uh, amount of of uh, time steps consumed is about thirty two percent of the time, while the in situ is around. 2.32 uh, percent. This means that uh, the we have at 0.1 percent uh, in order to perform this this uh, this this analysis of the data, performing the in situ each time step. This is really 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 good re result. And uh, now I am talking about the. Uh, PACAT. PACAT is a, a HPC in situ analysis tool which we have uh, we have developed here in QTH. The the main idea of uh, PACAT is uh, allows the real time handling of data arising from the C++ PTK API. This give me this gives give the advantage that we could use the the rendering techniques and geometrical algorithms which are inside of btk this is a small difference but really really important because we are avoiding the rendering so the point here is not the in situ visualization is the in situ analysis using what btk has inside and and uh, it's important to, to see that uh, we, we have divided uh, PACAT in, in three main parts, the core, filters, and apps. In filters, you, you can add what you need. In this case, I am going to show two main examples. Uh, the core of PATAC, which is where parallel performance operations are, are, are done and where uh, different wrappers has been implemented in order to connect with different applications. In this case, applications means that uh, the HPC co codes, which are available now in Accelerat or in other different uh, uh, areas. For instance, until now, PACAT has been connected to Alia, the HPC code developed in, in BSC, NEC, uh, NEC uh, 5000, which is developed in uh, United States, and open form, which is a CFD code uh, widely used here in, in Europe. Now I am going to, to show uh, some applications which uh, give an idea what we have, you can do with using PACAT. First one is uh, separation and reattachment points over a cylinder wall. Here, uh, the filter allows to use uh, both plus plus in order to, to uh, calculate 
uh, where the separation points are. And this, in this example, I am using neck as the, uh, the core code. However, it's important to say here that once that you have developed a filter, you can use, uh, you can use it with whichever code. So even I have used it now uh, neck for this example, I have used it also Alia and Open Phone to test this, this case. And finally, it's uh, so important to say that uh, Pakat uh, has a, for this example, I have put, uh, a, the, this example is available in Docker. Docker is a, a system in which you can put the code and test in order to prepare a computational cloud. So if someone is interested in try this example, part of this example, not complete, the main part, you can download and to run locally. It's not, in, it doesn't matter if you have Windows, Linux or, or Mac. And here, uh, uh, briefly, uh, what we are trying to do is we, ha we have a, a circular cylinder at low Reynolds number, one, 100. And we, what we are going to, to, to looking for is, is where vorticities uh, vanish. Is what we are looking for in, in uh, uh, briefly speaking. And here you can, I, I can, you can show, you can see uh, the packet workflow. Uh, in summary, uh, you have three, three main steps. The first step correspond to core. You, so you should you should uh, you should prepare your code. You should uh, prepare the setup of your of your mesh, and after that you can prepare your your filter. In this in this in this case, the where uh, separation point filter allows to calculate angles where the angles where vorticity are equal zero. On the cylinder uh, over the cylinder wall. The rest of the part is the code instrumentation. One, okay, uh, again, once that the code instrumentation has been performed, you can change uh, the the filters and you can analyze different the other different physics. Here you have uh, uh, some results. Uh, you can see. Um, the angles, the attachment, the attachment and retouch separation point and retouchment point for us uh, a cycle of um, the, 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 uh, of uh, lift and Reynolds number one one hundred. Uh, other, this is a is a more interesting uh, case applying exactly the same. And here in this case, you can see the oscillant oscillant cylinder. And this this calculation allows where we apply to in uh, the, the the algorithms in a um, uh, in situ way. So the calculation are, are performed at the same time that the simulation is running. Uh, finally, this is a, a very interesting uh, case. Also simple but very interesting. We have in the top we have results related to the simulation and in the bottom we have a neuronal, neuronal networking model uh, which has been applied also in uh, in in situ way here uh, the we are using a multiple multiple data execution model this means that NEC is running in a set of processors while the uh, science skin learn in this case used for the neural networking model is working in other set of processors. Uh, it, this is a this is a test, so uh, the model could be improved. However, the results are really interesting until now. Uh, the second example is the interface tracking for true phase flow uh, simulations. In this case, we have used open form, and what we are doing here is to the time tracking of the structure, uh, structures. Here. We have uh, bubbles of vapor, and the goal is to identify and characterize these bubbles. The bubbles here are shown in, in, in red. And here you can see how uh, the first bubble detached the system. And 
we characterize each bubble uh, using the bonding box size of the bubble and the center of mass uh, distance, which is the center of mass of this bubble and the distance of the previous center of mass of the same bubble. And, and this is what we can see in A and B. And C and D, you can see the second bubble detachment. This is the way in which we, we uh, identify these bubbles. And here you can see the evolution. And the important part here is that uh, uh, you can see the, we have performed the statistics of the bubbles. So uh, here you have the, the probability distribution of the bubbles in, in A and um, B. Sorry, I have put A in both sides. But, uh, but how uh, in, in the top is uh, related, this uh, probability distribution is related to the high, highest bonding box. And in the bottom, how the center of mass distance, you can see how the distribution has two maximums. And these maximums are related to, to the main bubble in, in, in this case. We can discuss uh, a lot of uh, the details related to this, uh, to this case. And finally, uh, uh, I was talking about of a real time 3D visualization of human sneezing. In this case, we have used part of the of the time tracking structure uh, algo, uh, filters uh, already uh, show, but in this case, apply it to ALIA, the ALIA code. Here you can see uh, some of the results. In the in the first one is uh, the visualization using Paraview. You have the links, and uh, if you are interested, on see details related to this to these examples. Here, uh, in part for the result of Paraview has been has been uh, achieved using um, also here all of everything is in C2. What we have changed here is uh, the the post process additionally performed in this case, and in the in the in the center you can see a uh, interactive uh, simulation, which is available in in the, um, in the web page. Uh, of Unity, which is the, the code what uh, we have used in order to, to, to do this. This is interesting. You can test it and you can see that you can interact with, the, with this, uh, this data and these simulations, the results achieved in these simulations. Also, you can see a video related to that. And the last, the last uh, video shows, uh, shows uh, the same results, but apply in other technology, the augmented reality. And this is really interesting because allows you to see uh, the, the distance that is necessary with someone has the sneezing. And this, this uh, application will be available in one or two weeks in the App Store, once that I fix a lot, uh, some problems. But I, I, this is really, really interesting to see how the uh, simulations, the results uh, achieved using the in situ and this simulation could be uh, compared with the real with the real life. So, uh, summary and next steps. Uh, Pakata is a HPC tool which allows real-time data analysis by means of uh, visualization algorithms. The visualization is so important, but it's not our, our goal in this case. A case presented shows flexibility and efficiency. And the main, the, we have uh, talked about the burning velocity and the current structures using open foam. And the last part uh, that we have working in cut edge technologies, neural networking models, clone computing, augmented reality, and interactive visualization. A deep performance analysis for cases described here have been performed. And finally, the use of PACAT in new large scale applications and technologies is considered. If someone is interested, we can talk of uh, collaborations. And 
that's it. Uh, thank you so much for your time.